And welcome my fellow scouts to the frozen plains of Russia. Today's battle was posted on the Napoleon Total War 3 Discord by Antonov. I was tagged in this replay, so thank you Antonov for tagging me. Um, his allies today are Private Polovsky, Garrick, and Beskatar 2345. On the other team, the red team today, we have Dirty Mike, Fonny, Black Dog, and Victor Rot. Now, going through the factions today, we have France, 1796 Italy, or Italia. We have Polska, and we have behind them, France, 1790, 1798 Orient, and next to him, I don't know, is that, is that a second France, 1796 army? I believe it is. Okay. Now, I can see their opponents in the distance, so we'll go through them first. We have over here Prussia, 1813 to 1815. We've also got here Russia, 1805 to 1807. And we have Severis or Sweden over there. Now that is three factions. Three out of four. So where is the mysterious fourth? Um, I'm searching for it right now. But while we search for it guys, if you want to send me through other Total War replays like this, you can tag me. Or you can post them to the links here displayed on your screen, which you'll find in the video description below. They are my Discord ID, which would enable you to send replays to me directly. Same goes to my email at scoutsofentertainment at gmail.com. And if there is an invite link to join my Discord server at Scouts Reconnaissance, it'd be a privilege to have you. We can post all manner of total replays into the Battle Replay sub channel you will find there. You can also link up with other players to organize other games if you so wish. And I found our fourth player just as I finished. We've got Russia here, 1812, Leb Gvardia. Okay, so on the map today we have four one pointers and one two pointer for a total of six points up for grabs. Now, players obviously be fighting over the center. This will be the focal point of the battle because whoever controls this building will probably win out. So, we've got all the armies here converging on this one spot here. We've got a massive army all making their way towards this area. Troops following the cavalry. That's a sight to behold. And this is just their side. Alright, so it looks like we're a little ways off from the engagement. So we'll do a small cut here, guys, and we'll come back soon. Alright, guys, we are back, and our engagement has begun. The red team has actually taken the building here, the two-pointer, or at least it's in their domain or their perimeter. Russia here has established his own little battle line here outside of the town, giving his side the buffer to the house, or easy access to it. Now we have a large portion here of the blue team cavalry stretched all along the plane here. Same goes for the red team, who's also shadowing it. We've got Russia, Sweden, and Prussia's cab here, I believe. Oh, Prussia's cab's over there shouting Polska, my bad. Yeah, so it was Sweden. Sweden, Russia, and the third faction, which I can't, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it's, it's Russia 1805. Yeah, he's over here somewhere as well, that I saw. Now, what's interesting is France was actually moving up, and Russia had just started to engage him. But at the last second, after they just started firing, he pulled back for some reason. Both sides just sort of trying to go the other into attacking. I've seen a lot of false starts already. We are 15 minutes in. Neither side wants to engage unless they're sh assured of victory. Now both the French Orient players are probably here. One army's in front of the other. It's not a bad idea. One army attacks the on sends in reinforcements if and when they're needed. We've had the artillery here on the blue team firing for some time. It looks like the 8-pounder I saw earlier was over here, but it relocated over here. And as you can see, it's been getting some sort of little sporadic fire throughout the last 15 minutes. I'm occasionally clipping some cavalry units. They've suffered uh, minor casualties here and there. Or at least some units have. Now, it looks like France is getting ready to march on the town. You'd have to think he's getting ready to march on the town. Especially from the formation of their armies. Now, Polska. Polska has been going back and forth up this side for a long time. He had a large portion of his cavalry over here before. Prussia was also here, just waiting for him to engage. But obviously, Polska thought at the last second, no. Nah. And he's pulled back all the way to the road. So that is a little surprising. Alright guys, Polska sent a unit into enemy territory to try and do it, maybe a general snipe. But Russia and Sweden have cornered him and he's going to engage. Let's have a look at the unit here, Polska. Okay, it was C7, Yulani to Zurich. Little, dra little dragoons over there, I think, maybe. And we also have some Kazachi. 
So maybe that's why he chose to engage. He wasn't going to get away. Unfortunately, that unit was pretty much uh, wasted. He got caught out, but um, yeah, he couldn't get away in time. Now, what's interesting is the red team's trying something similar, but they got their fastest unit back here, so it can outrun pretty much anything that the blue team tries to send its way. Now, it was probably eyeing the French and Polska generals. They are in the area, as you can see, here, here, and over there. And they are by themselves. This is a real threat here to the blue team. Now, Pulse was trying to charge after him, but he'll never reach them. I don't know if the blue team has anything in their arsenal that can run down those Russian units. Now, it looks like the blue red team was mostly down the street, but the blue team has forced them back. I don't know who exactly they're firing at. Looking at the cannon position. Looks like Cannonball there killed a couple of the, the crew. There they go. That's who they're firing after. They clipped this unit. The Yagurisugi. Oh, he got obliterated. Ah, oh, this is a good map. I tell you, in an Australian hot summer day, seeing this does make you feel cool a little bit. Air conditioning helps too. We got Prussia. Oh, jeez. Fountain of blood spewed up there. Only one guy copped it. Imagine that. That looked like a direct hit on that unit. But it only killed one dude. He must have, he must have copped all of it. That much blood and only one guy was killed. Now, Italy here has a few 8 pounder cannons. Pretty standard to have cavalry on the flanks. Of course, I think the 1796 player here is taking a big gamble. If he loses his cavalry, this entire line is in jeopardy. His allies are too far away to do too much with their own infantry. And they definitely have their own cavalry here as well. But um, it's not so much a, a problem for the red team if their cavalry is defeated. They got the tree line here, or the forest, to protect their ranks. They will slow down any potential cap charge from the right flank. They seem to keep a few units back here to shoot through the trees in the event that enemy cavalry does come down. And if the blue team's cavalry does decide to go around the tree line, well, that's a long journey. The enemy will definitely see them and just fall their enemy, fall their lines back maybe towards this town here. And have a couple units, uh, well, form the perimeter here that goes from the trees all the way around here. Again, the red team does have an advantage over the blue team here. They do have better field position. And it's not the end of the world if they lose the calf fight. For the blue team, if they do lose this calf fight, then it could potentially be an end of the world for them. So it's a big gamble. Now, what's interesting is we've got the red team moving down quite a long way here. They don't really need to do this. They've got the field position, they have all the points in their arsenal right now. Right now they're potentially leading 4 to 2. It's the blue team that has to come to them. They can wait them out. I feel like the red team might be overextending themselves here. The Prussian player should probably pull back and link up with Russia, Leb, over here in the town. I don't know if this is a bait, some sort of trap, but the blue team can move forward here and wedge out the blue, the red team. Our men are running, sir. They can divide the red team's army, isolate Prussia and it could potentially make it much easier to destroy. Then they have three other factions to worry about instead of four. Looks like France decided to charge in with one unit. Okay, they didn't kill the artillery crew, they got away. 
They've also got stakes here. But France ran through the gap, so they avoided the stakes. Yeah, Sweden got both their crews out of there in time. Six six pounder cannons. I tell you what. Both these sides are like boxes, they're sort of taking jabs at each other. You just don't know when the knockout punch is going to be thrown. Okay, looks like we've got Polska going in. They sent one unit up. Big gamble here to fight this close to the line. Both players are going to lose their units. The Iani definitely would have reformed. Same goes for the Prussian unit. Polska probably needs to pull back. This unit here can form a square. Indeed they are. The teams are getting closer and closer. Their line almost extends the full length of the map. Is Polska planning a flanking mission? He's, he is outnumbered. He doesn't have the quality to go toe-to-toe -to -toe here with Prussia. France's line is, is a little bit all over the place. He's got a set of ponies here. Moving the cannons around this fast is always nice. Both sides jockeying for field position. This player being very brave with his cannon. Okay guys, we're back. We can see troops are on the move here. Something is going to happen. In a sense that they're right behind the French lines here. France has been totally caught out. They're going after the French troops. Heavy French cavalry intercepted them. We got the Russian general here walking right beside a French unit. That's crazy. It looks like they were trying to isolate and destroy Polska's cavalry. See, his pulse is going in alone. This is nuts. Red team has a choice to make right now. Commit or fall back. They should commit. They have the troops to win here. Okay, they broke the Polska units. Just as reinforcements arrived. Polska is winning over here, though. Here comes some Russian heavy cav. Light tier cav is going to engage. Okay. Francis needs to get over here. I think they're running. Here comes the French cavalry. Is Russia and Sweden going to get caught out here? We've got reinforcements coming from Sweden. We've got French reinforcements coming in as well. So everyone's going to converge here. I think the battle has begun. France is a charge head on into Sweden here. France is pulling back. Okay, Russia and Sweden heading over here. Some of these French units can form square. Three out of four units here can form square. Sweden getting very lucky. Oh, they're starting to form square right now. Oh, where was that at? Okay, the Swedish general came over here to support the troops, but got in way too close. And that was Victoritz general. Okay, what we got here? Yeah, that's Russia's heavy cav. 
They're trying to finish off Polska. Okay, Russia has his best unit over here. We've got the elite Kursarakuri. The other Russian unit needs to join them quickly, but we've got another French unit moving in between them. We also got some chasseurs over there, not doing anything. Okay, they're turning around. I was just choosing to get out of there. We got Alex Kandera, or Alex. We've got French troops here that can potentially take a shot at him. But they're not going to line up and fire. Okay. There's some Ulini just out there. French troops are going to be able to outflank Russia soon. Our men are running first. Looks like French cavalry try to take out artillery again, but we're beaten back once again. Now we got Russian Cav here in the middle of the French army, it would seem. We've also got some Swedish Cav that reformed, I think. Yeah, I think so. And you got some other Russian Cav that have survived. They're heading back, licking their wounds. Not defeated. We've got some uh, Swedish unit here. Who are they? Okay, they're heavy Cav, they're Carabiner. Jaeger, sorry, Jaya or something like that. Skein. The other French player linking up with Polska. Trying to move on Prussia, but Prussia keeps falling back. Same goes with the Russian player. Now Sweden was engaging, but he's also pulled back for now. France is trying to cut off his retreat and force him back to the town. Russia sending over their own troops, Russia 1805. That should hold a halt with this French player in his tracks. Well, these guys here can form square. Now yeah, it looks like the artillery crews here were chased away, so the Swedish artillery is stuck where it is. But given this position, it shouldn't affect anything. They should be able to cause a few problems here for the French player on this side. Yeah, so a few troops drop there. You didn't see too many troops drop there. It's pretty good for Sweden for a retreat. We are hearing a few screams though. There's the Russian army. France doesn't really seem in formation. This appears to be Russia's battle line here, just three units, or well, two or three. Looks like France is gearing up. They want to go after that artillery once again. Another attempt, maybe. No, he thought better about this one. Alright, guys, we're back. France is making a move on the town. You can see the red team firing from the building. Few gaps in their line. You should try and work on work on closing that. These guys here lost about 22 men.
Oh, they're not. Are oh, they firing? No, they weren't firing. I'm losing a couple of troops. Cost is going up through the city, through the town. But yeah, they're going to outflank the Russians or we'll try and go for the building. France needs to move up here too to put pressure on these Russian troops in front of them. To pop, make, it, make Polska's life a little bit easier in taking the building. We got a unit coming in. We've got two Polsky units here. Alright, Polska's won that battle. Can Russia form up in time to fire a nice volley? Oh, it says they're trying. It looks like the red team's going to hold the building. You got here a French artillery, a four pounder set. Firing on the Russians, both the Russian players. So Prussia's entered the battle now. Red team does have the high ground. Let's head over here. Sweden being pushed further up the road. So this French player's been caught out. These guys here lost 20 troops. France moving up the road here very cautiously. It's actually pushing Russia back. Making the blue team's life a little bit easier to move on Sweden. And this is pretty cool. The blue team did this to avoid the artillery. Since the artillery can't move at all, they simply shifted their army around, taking them out of the range or line of fire here of the crew of the cannons. And now the targets that these cannons can hit may be a very, fairly limited. They still got a nice target on the um, blue team's troops on the other side of the road, though. The other French player and Polska are definitely copying it to some degree. What is going on here? I'm hearing a battle of some sort. We've got a French unit here in retreat. Okay, Russia's coming back. Well, they're outnumbered. At least four to six. Okay. Blue team opting not to try and take the house. Okay, I don't know if the cannons here are firing on the house at all. We've got some Russian skirmishes ahead of them. We've got 17 minutes left on the clock here. Something's got to give. Something's got to happen soon. Blue team's running out of time. Okay, Sweden has engaged. We've got two French cab units. We're trying to go after the artillery again. This Swedish unit has from a square. France is taking advantage of that. They're doing a bayonet charge on them. We've got two, three additional French units firing on this one, which has broken. 
Now there's a gap here in the line. France has successfully separated some of Swedish forces from the others. What we got here? This unit can form square. Alright, they're going to try and wipe out the artillery now. They should succeed. I don't see anything stopping them. Alright, who we got up here ahead? Russian cavalry. Our men are running, sir. Okay, France is on the move. How long will they keep up this attack? Sweden is about finished. He's only got one unit, I think, left on the field. Oh no, he's got a couple units. At least one more cap. Oh, he's still got plenty of units. My bad. Sorry, Sweden. He's still well and truly in this fight. Well, this French player is still chasing Russia across the frozen plains. The question is, where is Russia falling back to? How far, is pre how far is he prepared to go? He probably say as far as I need to. There's a unit here that France could be firing on. Okay, we have some Akrochi. They should be able to get a very nice firing line on these guys. Wonder why they're not shooting. There you go. Jeez, nothing. That's crazy. This range of units about to be sandwiched here. I don't know if they're going to bayonet charge him or shoot him in the back. I mean, you got to think he's going to bayonet charge him getting in this close. Or not. So much for France getting the drop on him. Jeez, these guys here, they're destroying this unit in front of them. Down to 20, they obliterated them. Okay, they are about finished. We got here one of the French generals. The cold must have gotten to his head. Our men are running, sir. Oh, jeez. I think that was Antonov's general. Probably got caught up moving around his troops and forgot about the general. The real question is, does this change things? We got a lot of enemy cavalry behind these lines. France's left flank met a lot of resistance here from Russia. Really held them up. There's a few gaps in their lines. Russia could outflank them. It could be devastating. It's probably in Sweden's best interest here to engage these three French units at the same time. Do a side charge here from Russian cavalry. Break them. 
chip away at the blue team's forces. Might be enemy cavalry there. But at the same time, we've got Swedish lines here all firing in this direction. So they should be able to take some casualties of the French cavalry as well. The Russians here could also fall back and come from France from behind. Still light skirmish is just going on in the town here. We have 10 minutes left on the clock. Both sides still have strength. France is going in. Three's cap here is broken. They might reform. France continues its advance despite exposing itself to the Russians behind them. I know there's, I know there's French troops behind this line here. Big gamble here. It could, it could really pay off. This French unit here forms square. Now I'm sure the French player here would love nothing more than to get a square formation, but he can't. The Russian cavalry is too close. The French unit's in moving in, trying to get some extra kills, make sure these guys don't come back. The next question I got is will France turn around and try to sandwich Russia against the French troops on this side? It looks like they're heading into town. What is this way? There is a building on the Russian control. Okay. So right now it is two to three, potentially. In favor of the red team. Minor casualties on the French side here. Nice artillery strike there from Prussia. The artillery and the rest of the Prussian army appears to be pushing the blue team back. We got Francie moving through the city. Going after this unit to make it a tie. Someone's shattering windows here. Yeah, the red team's taking it, so it is four to two right now. With six minutes forty-five seconds to go. Blue team's gone for it. We have camels here. From the Orient. We've got some Asars coming in. Trying to carve a path. 
and provide protection for the blue team as they move up towards the house. Those French troops are going to move up. Orient Cavalry definitely doing their thing. Alright, blue team has smashed their way through. They've got a clear path now to the house. They're challenging, or well, they tried to challenge the red team for control of the building. But Russian cavalry is helping them hold the building here. We've got, is that four French units? Or three French units and a French cavalry unit. Okay, we have the Kyosuriki. Okay, did they take it? Yeah, okay, they took this one. So right now, it is a tie. Blue team establishing a perimeter just outside the house. It says there's some sort of battle going on for the house right now, but I don't see it. Crushing Cav moving in. Trying to break through. We've got Russians racing in to re-fortify the house. We have four minutes left on the clock. Russia and Oscar broke. We got French troops racing in from all over. This unit is trying to hold back a Russian unit, it would seem. What you got over here? You got here. Some massage. I thought there was maybe the general there, but I was wrong. It was impressive that France managed to take this building. The streets obviously made it hard for the Russians to use their elite cavalry. Yeah, I didn't see whose general that was. The Russians are coming up behind them. Another, okay, that's the red team general there, Fonny. Jeez, what killed him? Maybe a lucky stray bullet or something. These guys here trying to reform. goes far on the Russians, I wonder. They're facing the wrong way. Okay, the Russians are broke. The Swedes here down to one third their strength. France going for the building again. They're running out of men. You know, like, what's it going to take? Prussian cavalry charging in. Did the cavalry kneecap 
Arabs attempt to take the building. We have one minute left on the clock. We have a tie at the moment. Prussia trying to send over reinforcements. France does not have anything in the area. We still got the red team here trying to take the building all the way down there. They probably won't succeed. Jeez, I don't think we have a winner here. I think we're going to have a draw. Oh, hang on. We could have a potential winner. 20 seconds left. Our men are running for okay, red team has just taken the lead. Ten seconds left. France trying to retake the building. And I think that's it. We saw the red team hold the house to the south. We have a draw, but I think Dirty Mike and his allies took the field today, so well done to them. The one based on lock points. Alright, Dirty Mike here got 939. Funny, 966. Black Dog, 767. Victorot, 1053. We have Private Poloski, 615. Antonov, 2050. Nice job there. Garrick, 782. And Baz Guitar, 2345. 783. Okay, best performances there were the Poor Grenier. We had 300 kills. Nice job. The Hussars were next, 286. The Moustaches, 198. Batali, 149. Aroshi. So it sounds Japanese almost. I'm probably saying it wrong then. 148. Vexen. 141. Villani. 140. 135. Mustaches again. 121. Vexen. 113. 8 pounder. 103. And Picul. 96. I'll give him that one. And the rest of his units did not too bad. Some got no kills at all. Some got plenty of kills. This range from literally, literally range from 0 to 300. So, you know, overall good performance there. Thank you to Anton for tagging me in this replay. If you want to see your own replays featured here on this channel, guys, you can send them to the links to displayed in your screen, which you'll find in the video description below once again, or you can also tag me as well. This is, this is Mika on behalf of Scouts of Entertainment signing off. Goodbye, my fellow Scouts. See you in the next Total War battle.